there's a butcher's in Matthew Comer. Um, and they sell cronuts on a Friday morning. It's Thursday. So I guess instead of cronuts, I'm just gonna have a look at this Vardot. This is Masikoma Vardut. Um, this is spanning the valley between Masikoma on the one side, Hengod on the other side. It's also called Hengod Vardut, so if I switch between the two, please don't judge me. Um, and yes, yeah, you can see today it's a, a very nice cycle path. It was built by the Newport Abergavenny and Hereford Railway, who decided that they wanted to get their fingers in the pie when it came to coal and minerals from the valleys. Now, as, as I've, I've said on previous occasions, there's coal up there, there's docks down there in Barry, Penarth, Cardiff and Newport, and they want to get the coal from up there to down there, and that's why initially they built the canal and then they built loads of railways. But these guys had different, uh, different aims. They effectively said, right, we can get some of this coal up into the Midlands, and we can get it into some of the factories around there. So they decided they were going to build a branch from uh, Pontypool uh, over the valleys towards Quaker's Yard. Eventually it ended up down in Neath. But to do that they had to bridge some gaps, some valleys. And they did it with two rather nice verdicts. One, which is well known, is Crumlin, and I'll look at that in another, uh, another time. But the second one is this one, Masikoma Hengoid Verdict. They've actually got these lovely uh, kind of like humps there's one here and there's one a bit further down so you can stand and look down the valley and even though it's all protected and we're looking at it through wires uh, you can see why it's an absolutely stunning view uh, it wouldn't have been like this when it was built um, because this there was this was just countryside um, no roads no houses no nothing um, and they dug a quarry in order to build this particular viaduct the design in the architect on it um, was a guy called Thomas Kennard and he won the contract to build both of them. And he looked at the crumbling barter and went, nope, too steep, got to build a metal one. Um, and he looked at this one and went, we can do that with stone. So work began in 1853 and the line opened in 1858. And in all the building of it, uh, they only had one fatality, um, which for that day was pretty good going. It remained double tracked until 1928. And then in 1964, our old friend Beeching got his hands on it and the line closed. It sat here dormant for some years until the turn of the century, around about 2000, someone said, well, how about we build this up to be, uh, to be a cycle path? And that's exactly what they did. And later on, they got some funding to build the fences and put some lighting in and uh, to do some work on the stonework down below. And today it's a real, real community asset. <laughs> This is obviously the end of the viaduct now we come off the viaduct but this is the site of hengoid high level uh, and there are two hengoid stations there was uh, obviously one up on the viaduct where you could catch a train in the one direction to pontypool uh, and in the other direction you could catch the train to uh, down to quakers yard and neath um, and it says on the station sign change of Cardiff, Caerphilly and the Romney Valley because the other station was Hengoid Low Level which is exactly here. Now 
as you can see, there's not a lot of that station left, but there are a few kind of stonework coping stones here. Might have been a platform, might have been edging of something, but uh, some evidence there was something here. And then over to a modern footbridge. So the idea of the line was to link up with as many different railways as they could. And this side of the valley, over in Hengoid, was the Romney line, the Romney railway. And they decided, yeah, good place to, to link up. And these are actually, this is the site of what the locals still called the railway sidings. Um, now, as you can see, well over, overgrown. But this would have been where uh, the exchange sidings between the, uh, the railway over the Vardat and the Romney line would have, uh, would have taken place. So around about here would have stood another railway station. This was Massey, Cummer and Hengoid, and we are on the Brecon and Merthyr Junction Railway, uh, the one that the Barry line linked up to at the end of the three, uh, three Vardux video. And excuse the noise in the background, but there's a burger van with a generator. And you can see from this old photograph where the railway station sat and then disappeared underneath the first arch of the Vardux. So the line would have continued um, up here. And in actual fact, when they built the Vardat, one of the things they had to do was actually build this first arch over the Brecon and Merthyr Junction Railway uh, because it was already in situ. And uh, walking now where the trains uh, would have gone, I don't walk very far due to the fact that the track bed would have actually disappeared off the left here and continued down um, and there was a, a bridge further down so let's go and see if we can find that and this is where it comes out um, from here on in it's in trees but you can clearly see the abutments of the bridge that went over here Bracken and Merthe Junction Railway having come underneath the viaduct heading up towards uh, towards the top end of the valleys and a bit further up at Flody Lee was where the line linked from the railway that went over the viaduct. Um, so let's go and see if we can find that. So this is part of the um, refurbishment in 2004 when they got the extra money. Uh, they built this. They call it the Wheel of Drams. Um, and it is to signify the... I have to look left and right and walking over this bit because there's lots of, lots of cycles on this. It's fantastic. Jenny, you need to get down it. As number of the collieries, Empire, Ocean, Evans Bevan. There we go. The Wheel of Drams. So wandering down the path now from the Wheel of Drams and off the Vardux. Um, still can't get hold. <laughs> still can't get over just how lovely it is. I'm heading down now towards where the junction would have been from this line, the Newport Abergavenny Hereford line, and where they would have built off to head down. And remembering we're quite a way up here, um, and they would have had to go down at a gradient in order to meet the Brecon and Merthyr Junction Railway down below, and I believe a little bit along here. I'm going to be able to see where that was. Well, sometimes, sometimes it's a bit easier to find things than others. And here we go. So this would have been the track bed of the line that headed down towards the Brecon and Merthyr Junction Railway. Um, not marked on a map, interestingly enough. When you look at the Google map and the OS map, it's not on here. So I'm going to explore down here. Well, use path. It's not as if it's any secret. Let's see how far down I can get. So yeah, this path continues on. Um, fascinating because I didn't think there was a footpath down here. So I'm quite pleased because if 
my calculations and my map bearings and my sense of direction, which is pretty good, uh, is right, we should, in a minute, hit a bridge. Oh, sometimes I even scare myself. So here we are. Yep, small road bridge built by Newport, Abergavenny, Hereford Railway to link from their line down to the Brecon and Merthyr Junction. So I really hope you've enjoyed this look at the viaduct, the railways that it linked to the reason it was here. Um, quick look at Hengoid Station, even managed to get a 769 in operation, which um, knowing how shaky they were at the start is a little bit of a bonus. Please like, share, share, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, let your friends know I'm here. I do these for fun. Not quite sure where I'm going next time. All depends on the weather, but I have now got my Transport for Wales bus pass, which gives me a discount on the railways as well. So absolutely anything could happen. See you next time.